Hello everyone. So probably all of you, people who made some complex and interesting stuff with parametric design, particularly in Grasshopper, you have probably thought, hmm, how can I make a, a, qual a high quality render or high quality drawing of make 2D of this uh, object that you just made? And every time you try to make a 2D uh, drawing from meshes in Rhino, normally you get a lot of lines missing. The time is insane, like it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Then you need to model it super in a super clean way. But then if your shape is not just rectangles or boxes or bricks, if it's something more complex, more organic and more interesting, it normally doesn't give you a very good result if you're using the make 2D command in Rhino. And uh, trust me, I have faced this problem many times myself. And uh, so today I'm going to show you the life hack, which is probably going to change uh, this process for you forever. It changed for me. <laughs> so, and uh, the funny part about it is that I uh, learned this uh, trick from a person who hasn't opened Grasshopper a single time in his life. Actually, it was my colleague. And we were, when we worked together, uh, he was looking at the screen, uh, seeing uh, all the complex Grasshopper stuff I was doing. And he was like, man, can I maybe show you um, or test some idea that I have? And I was like, yeah, sure, man, let's, let's do it. And then he uh, basically found a way. Of course, I was naming the components, explaining how to connect things. And then the person who, he was pretty good in Rhino. He was quite decent with Rhino, to be honest. But a person who never opened Grasshopper in his life managed to find a way to actually make my life and the life of our team a lot easier. Because from that day onwards, we didn't have to spend much time on making 2D uh, drawings from meshes and the quality of those drawings was actually really really good. So long story short let's um, start and let me show you how it works. So specifically for this uh, session I prepared a sub-D model. I don't know it's uh, quite uh, extravagant. I think it's uh, has quite an interesting shape and uh, I'm going to show you how to convert it into a mesh, um, mesh uh, not wireframe but like mesh um, lattice to show the topology of the mesh, to show the detailing level of details, amount of polygons and so on. So let's uh, create a sub-D container in uh, Grasshopper. Let's bring this sub-D into Grasshopper. Let's say uh, set one sub-D. Um, yeah, after that I'm gonna convert it. As you can see we already start getting this uh, grid, this sub-D grid, right? So uh, Let's uh, say mesh from sub D, right? This one. And let's convert it into a mesh. Of course, we can also take the sub D, by the way. Uh, but I think that, uh, yeah, for today we're going to show, uh, we're going to check the mesh workflow because I think meshes are still more, more widely used than sub Ds in uh, Grasshopper. But and in Rhino as well. But of course, it uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean that we um, have to be limited to only them. So um, now we have this sub D converted into a mesh. We can see the resolution of this grid. I'm gonna, actually going to hide this model for now. So I would say I'm already quite happy with the resolution. Of course, we can increase it. However, I will not increase it for this, for the purposes of this tutorial because I think that, uh, well, to be honest, I think it's going to be quite quite a heavy. Um, file already and it might take some time to export but trust me the quality will be quite will be really really good actually so let's take this mesh and then let's uh, use the component called uh, mesh offset this uh, this tool uh, this uh, particular component comes from pufferfish plugin and in my opinion it's quite a useful one so here in create solid we say false basically we say invert Right to make sure that uh, what we're going to make is going to be a shell uh, without any thickness, right? And then we can control the distance. So the distance has to be super, super small because our goal is actually to extract the edges and uh, not only take the wireframe of the mesh, but actually to make sure that the actual mesh will be hiding whatever we don't want to see, but showing whatever we want to see. So for the distance for the offset, I'm going to set something very, very tiny, just a little tiny bit bigger than the tolerance, maybe something like this, should go. Uh, of course, it's important to consider the units you're working in because um, your model needs to be like, um, yeah, it does, it, it, this offset should be really, really tiny. You should be barely able to tell the difference between 
let's say this this mesh and that mesh right you barely you can barely see it you can the difference is there but you can't really tell the difference right okay so after that we say mesh edges and we extract all the edges of this particular mesh all the let's say wireframe of this mesh and the important thing is to merge naked edges and uh, clothed edges. Of course, this particular mesh is closed, and generally speaking, it's a good mesh, you can 3D print it. I checked it, and uh, I'm actually thinking of 3D printing it, but that's another story. And then let's create a specific layer for the curves. I'm gonna call it curves. Not very original, but uh, clear and uh, understandable. So I'm gonna uh, bake those curves, I'm gonna group them, and uh, now we have this, uh, I'm gonna show the, uh, actually this geometry is a sub D, so I'm not gonna show it, I'm gonna create a layer for mesh, and then inside this layer I'm gonna place my geometry. So pay attention, I'm not taking the offsetted mesh, I'm taking the original mesh, right? And I'm bringing it to Rhino. Why is it important? Because we need to have to make sure that this mesh will be actually covering those edges that we are not interested in, right? So I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna select this geometry and uh, of course we need to select the view. I think this this kind of view is quite quite good. If we are planning to overlay this drawing and the render, it's quite important to save the view, the named view, right? Go, goes without saying, but I'm still gonna say it. Uh, it goes not only with uh, iso, iso, um, isometric views, but also with perspective views. So if you want to make sure your perspective image gets nice outlines, you can use this technique as well. So uh, now what I do, I select all the curves and the mesh itself, right? And then I say, make 2D. So after that, I can select whatever I want. I really don't recommend uh, selecting hidden lines because this will make the time of the process a lot longer. But I will select the scene silhouette, I will select the viewport rectangle, especially if I'm planning to overlay it with a potential render, and of course the group output and uh, the view, right? So these are the settings that uh, I'm using right now. Of course, you are more than welcome to test other settings. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna say okay. So this process itself, uh, last time I did it, took me around 50 seconds. So uh, we have like a minute to <laughs> talk about other things. And I take the opportunity to invite you to check our parametric market that uh, just recently got updated by many more new tools, uh, scripts and models for 3D printing. And also check our website for the new courses. We are planning to organize a few workshops now. and. Uh, in comments, please let me know if you find this tutorial useful and also if you would like us to make a tutorial about something else. We already have like a list of uh, interesting topics and uh, we normally tend to give priority to the, to the topics which uh, are interesting for most users. So please uh, let us know and um, me and my colleagues will be happy to, to do it. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's almost done, I have a feeling, but uh, yeah, I think it is. At least this progress bar is gone. And it's not many curves, it's 72,000. So I think it should, have, should be ready any moment now. Yeah, normally, uh, still, even with this method, it takes quite some time. Um, but um, there is also a component for Make 2D in Grasshopper, by the way. I'm not sure how much time will it take there, though. I think it's more or less the same as in Rhino. But um, yeah, let's see the result. I honestly can't wait to see it. So last time I did it was quite, quite nice. Um, yes, there we go. So. Let's go to top view and let's see how, how does it look. Oh yeah, that's nice. That looks pretty good. So, 
Okay. There we go. Uh, now it's time to actually uh, change some things, maybe. Yeah, so that's good. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna uh, change the colors of those elements. I'm gonna just select everything, go to properties, uh, display color by layer, line type by layer, print color by layer, print width by layer. There we go. Look how clean it is. And look how it just shows all the details that we have here. And of course, goes without saying, even though the scene silhouette is not 100% there, which unfortunately happens quite normal, quite normally, quite you quite oftenly. Uh, I would show you one more uh, one more trick how to get a cl much cleaner silhouette. So I'm not going to do the entire thing, but I'm just going to show you the the outline. You need to select all the curves. You say curve boolean. It takes a few seconds to actually gather the information about all the curves. And then once it's done, you just need to click inside the regions that you want to keep. So if you want to preserve the outline, you need to keep somewhere around this shape. Um, yeah, it takes a bit more time than it should, but there we go. You see? So we can get the silhouette and if you click in these openings, you're also getting curves there. You can change it to um, scene silhouette curves and you say bring to front. So that this way these curves are gonna be in the front line. And then you say print display, just to check the result. Right, so we're getting the 0 0.5 thickness here. And then if we change the curves a little bit, can make them uh, a little bit lighter and also a little thin. There you go. So look, we're getting a very clean, very, um, I would say quite an elegant drawing for Rhino. I mean, of course you can further develop it in Illustrator or uh, even in Rhino. I think it has quite a decent set of uh, drawing tools. And then, um, yeah, you get the complete outline and uh, you can overlay this image with your render or with your diagram and you can get some really nice images out of it. So yeah, guys, as I said, let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, if you have any other questions about how it works or if you would like us to develop more tools about uh, graphical representation in Rhino, let us know. And uh, yeah, thanks and have a nice week. Bye.